This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Now, the tragedy in Japan, unrest in the Middle East, and of course, an impasse over a federal budget in Washington, all looming over the economy. And the economy's agenda, well, is our next thought of process here for Dan Wiener, chairman of Advisor Investments. He's also the editor of the Independent Advisor for Vanguard Investments and the FFSA Independent Guide to the Vanguard Funds, a great bedtime read. And also we've got Joe McAlinden, fund manager for Catalpa Capital, former chief investment officer of Morgan Stanley Investment Management. I couldn't put all those bad, those potentially bad things together and then bring you in, you know, Dan, know, because know. you've got, as I said, problems in Japan, of course, budget impasse, Middle East problems, oil $110 a barrel. What's not to like, right? Well, there's a lot to like, I think. Uh, you know, you've got heavy truck sales going up. You've got uh, FedEx and UPS expanding their, uh, their flights in the Far East. Uh, you know, you've got good news in the labor markets. Better than the headline tells you, 8.8% unemployment. It looks a little better when you realize that uh, more people were out looking for jobs at the same time. So it, it, actually a little better on a relative basis. Um, you see, he's looking for that silver lining to everything. You agree, Joe McAlinden? Well, I think the economy is going to be very strong in the quarters ahead. And U.S. economy. U.S. economy. And, and well, the northern European economy is fairly strong as well. Uh, and, and, of course, Japan has had this terrible tragedy, but the silver lining in that, of course, is that there's a lot of rebuilding that's going to go on in the next several years. So I think the stage is set for, um, you know, tr truly a, a global boom in the next 24 months. Do we, need to, do we need to worry about the budget impasse in Washington? Uh, uh, probably not. I mean, the shut. I think you're talking about the shutdown. Yeah. The, last the fact that they can't get the a budget times, together and it's already six months yeah, into the, the fiscal year. Well, things we like worry that. about that long term. Sh short term, the last two times it happened, the market went up. So uh, we don't exactly. worry about that too much. But, you know, th this is a classic one of these markets that climbs this wall of worry. And we keep putting blocks in the wall. You know, if it's not the tsunami, if it's not the second earthquake, if it's not oil uh, at 110 dollars a barrel, oil at 110 bucks. But remember that oil at 110 bucks a barrel is partly the Middle East and Northern Africa, the MENA countries. Right. But it's also economic expansion. I mean, demand. It, it's demand, right? So. So that's a good. That's a, a good, good, a good sign. That's absolutely a good thing. All right. So Joe McLean, and this continues for how long? I think it continues, uh, well, in terms of the economy, I think the economy is going to be very robust for the next four to six quarters. Uh, the stock market, I think, is in a trading range that it's going to break out of on the upside, um, but will fail to make a new high. And the whole issue is going to be when do they start pulling away some of this excess liquidity? When does the we Federal know, Reserve? We know, in, yes, the Federal Reserve. We know when QE2 is supposed to end. Uh, but what we don't know was when the Fed is actually going to start raising rates as the ECB did today. Important thing on that hike, by the way, is was Trichet's comment that this is not necessarily the beginning of a rate hike cycle. So maybe they're not reading from different hymn sheets. Maybe well, they're just reading from different portions well, of the book. I think the important thing that, that, that doesn't make the headlines is that the inflation adjusted short term rates. In other words, if you take short term rates and look at the inflation rate, both both regions, the U.S. and Europe, still have negative real rates of interest on the short end. And that's, a, that's an extremely stimulative monetary environment. Basically, what you're saying is if you loan money to anybody for a short period of time, you're not going to make anything. Well, you're, you're kind of getting paid to borrow. Right. Look at the, look at the big companies that have, uh, have gone into the market recently. You know, we just acquired another company so we have a uh, right, well, you just new, made yes. an acquisition explain a little a, bit about that and how that okay. gives you a different perspective well, on what's going on what in the I market. was gonna say is we we bought another company we're now managing 2.3 billion dollars in the process of doing that we brought on a couple of guys who are really uh, really add to our brain trust at the company Jim Lowell and, and I've been there for quite a long time now we've got a guy named Rusty Vanneman and a guy we call the bond guy Chris Keith what does and he Chris, say? And Chris has been talking about the fact that you've got all these big companies, you know, the, the Dells of the world are going out and borrowing. We saw this a few years ago. When rates are low, big companies go out, they borrow money because they know it's a good deal. It's a great time to go out and borrow money. But you money. as an investor, you don't want to be on the other side of that trade necessarily. You don't want to be loaning your money to a big company for very low well, interest not, rate, not right? If, not if you think rates are on the rise, but according to, you? to our bond. I believe they're on the rise. I believe, and Chris 
agrees with me on that or I agree with him. But it's not going to be a jump. It's not going to be a, a, you know, a big jump up because you're not going to see the Fed doing the kind of hikes that, you know, a quarter, a quarter point one month after the next. That's just not going to happen. Although Joe McElhinney, I mean, Ben Bernanke says, don't worry about inflation because even if there is inflation, he's going to figure out a way to stop it in its tracks. Well, the only way to stop it in its tracks is to cut off the, the excess liquidity, which would be quite negative for the, both the stock and the bond markets in, in, in the short run. I just want to make one point, though. Uh, and This was an observation when I first heard it from Milton Friedman back in the mid-1960s. I said, huh? And then I thought about it and read his stuff and studied it. And low short-term interest rates inevitably push up long-term interest rates because the inflation expectations of the players, you talked about all these corporate issuers, they know rates are too low. That's why they're issuing all these bonds. You're going to see long-term rates start creeping higher, even as short-term rates stay low. Joe McElhinney, thank you very much. Dan Wiener, always a pleasure. Coming